we're back. Thanks. We're back. We're gonna we're gonna head off the next book. It's it's uh, the Invincible. Oh, Invincible. It's uh, Ryan Noceris. No. No. Robert Kirkman. Damn. Murad helped me get into this book. This was a book that I never discovered before. It's uh, Robert Kirkman's the writer and and Corey Walker and Ryan Otley. Can you say it into that camera right there? Corey Walker and Ryan Otley. Okay, and go. <laughs> and and one of the things about this book and and that got me into it and the reason why I think when you talked to me about it for the first time was that y you had this air about you always of being about alternative books, like Scud and whatnot, right? About mm -hmm. stuff that was, mm -hmm. and so I was like, well, I'll check this one out because it looks so bright and like fun. And then the first couple of issues, it is such a, as you get into it, even in this first hardcover, it's an homage to everything that is the Justice League. That oh, is, yeah. you know, Superman. That is, you know, what it is to be Batman and stuff like that. And not only that, it has what, the names of the trade paperbacks are what, like eight is enough, and uh, all eighties and seventies sitcoms. Eighties and seventies right? sitcoms. Omni, Om, Omni Man's okay, right? Omni Man who's Superman, right? Okay. It's the, it's the guy from the other planet. The trait that they have that makes them Kryptonians, let's say, okay, is a mustache. That's how like weird and oh. wonderful this book is, right? Like it goes to this point where it's just. It has these things where you're like, oh my, like to the point where I thought almost the females from that planet might have mustaches. They do. You know. It's lower. It's <laughs> Are they? <laughs> we can't say that on TV. <laughs> we could say maybe that they're Italian. <laughs> <laughs> that they're Italian women. We can, can we say that or no? You might be able to say Okay. That. But anyways, this is a wonderful book that, that and, and I constantly tell people whenever I'm talking to anyone, family members, uh, homeless people, whatever, <laughs> that this is the comic book they should buy. So it's when, brilliant. When people beg for change in the street, you just hand them a trade of oh, invincible. Absolutely. A thirty dollar value. <laughs> yeah. Yours if yeah. you're homeless. <laughs> yes. And it's a wonderful book. It has everything that I grew up with in comic books. Um, Wolverine is in it. <laughs> no way. Batman's in it. <laughs> well, <laughs> if if by Wolverine you mean heart. But oh. this is you know what, I just okay. gotta say one thing is that the the homages are so thinly disguised. Like, they're not disguised. They're not supposed to be. They're not supposed to well, be disguised. Just, That's like, why the trade even, paperbacks are named after 80s. No, but I mean, right. there's even a Star Trek homage. Let's put it this way. This is one of the better superhero comics, but I wish it was the worst. And what I mean is that there's nothing wrong with it, but it's it's not, to me, it's not great. I, I don't think it's great. I think it's good, but I don't think, I don't Robert Kirkman is a great writer. What, I just, is, what is the new catchphrase they've got for it? Like issue 50, issue 51 was like greatest superhero comic ever. Go get it. Oh, no, I go. think every issue is it's yeah, the it's greatest, greatest superhero, superhero comic ever. in the universe. Yeah, I'm just saying. <coughs> Wait a minute. It I, takes, want, sorry. I, I want George, because George kind of told me a little bit about this comic and it, it brought it brought a tear to my eye. I don't want to say it because I'm, I'm pretty manly. <laughs> <laughs> but when the the scene where the father talks to the son, it has a lot to do with yeah. It has to do with like uh, not only just like and that that becomes a superhero like a Superman thing, right? Where the father passes the torch to the son, and the son realizes he's gonna have superpowers, and he gets really excited about it. And then it cuts to the near future where he's working at a McDonald's, and he's bummed out that he's got no powers yet. Yes. And he goes to throw the garbage into the yeah. dumpster, and anyone who's worked in a kitchen or worked a BS job like that before, he goes to throw the garbage in the dumpster. And the garbage bag flies so far that it cuts to like a state later and it makes a crater in this dude's front lawn. But in a later issue, in a later issue it lands, right? And then that's when he realizes he has superpowers because to me, there's never a time when someone wishes they had superpowers more than when they're working like this a crappy minimum wage job. This book, you know what I mean? And you're a comics reader hey, and like, I know better. You know I mean? We're all anyway. fortunate to have jobs right now. It's this true. book, this book is everything that if you grew up, like I did, reading, like playing with G.I. Joe action figures and growing up with comics and the whole bit and wanting the Joker and Sabretooth to be real so I could fight them and have powers and the whole bit. George, you get your this ass is kicked. <laughs> probably. <laughs> really? But this is this is that book. This is that book that that is more than Peter Parker, the wimp who gets beat up and gets bit by a radioactive spider and then gets to beat up the kid who, who roughs him around and then has to Oh, with great responsibility comes great responsibility. <laughs> Whatever it is. Something, Wait, you know. One, one, one thing really quick, I just got to say. One thing about Kirkman, sometimes with his writing, I do wish that when the father reveals to 
Invincible about his origin. Yeah. I kind of wish they, that Invincible would have figured it out his own, or someone would have figured it out. Instead of basically his father just spilling it all out. And he's like huge, seven years old. What are you playing in the time? So the kid's name is Invincible. That's this is how the whole thing. Name. That's a superhero name, right? Superhero so that, it's named yeah. after the actual kid. Yeah. 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 About the, the, but the superhero. Do you know what I mean? Like, okay. Would have been better if there would have been like clues, like a mystery, instead of his father saying, "By the way, this is what's really going on," and then explain the entire thing in one huge scene. And it would have been better to like either the son or someone to find out, wait a minute, this this isn't right and that's not right. Turns out my father's evil. But wait Wouldn't a minute, time I think Superman found out at a very alert. young age. <laughs> Spoiler, I'll add that in later. But don't, yeah, but didn't Superman Krypton. find out at a very young age? He he figured it out through... He's in the barn. Dun, 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 I just dun, think it would have been better. Right? I mean, I think I think Mike, better. Mike, you're being way too harsh. This comic is one of the best because it takes everything that's cool about mm -hmm. the DC universe, it takes everything that's cool about the Marvel universe, Puts it into a new universe, makes it cool, makes it adult, makes it hip, and it starts you at the beginning. Like, I think I've mentioned this to you guys before, it's uh, Superman and Batman and all these great heroes, mm -hmm. Spider-Man, they're all at issue like 500 plus now. Yeah. And That's it's nice to have a really cool hero for our generation that is starting now. Like, well, one thing I'll agree is it is in. better than almost every DC Marvel title. I definitely agree with that. I think I think it's it's much like when uh, if you ever been in a relationship with a woman. Well, uh, let's, yeah. let's let's just talk to three and, of us. And then and, and then and then woman. and they get up in the morning and they're in a bad mood, and then they they try to get you into a bad mood. And then once they get you into a bad mood, all of a sudden they're in a good mood. George, that's I, what I think about you disliking this comic. This is the best comic ever made. I don't know what George now. is talking You're about. You gotta like it. I know you love it. about it just seemed to work in its own kind of way, but it's not like any other superhero movie you've seen before. So some who are used to like the happy endings and all the formula of other superhero movies of yore, uh, you might not like it, but for a Batman fan, uh, you'd probably really enjoy it. Uh, just like how it takes like your traditional superhero storyline or movie or whatever, it takes the whole city and literally turns it upside down leaving everyone hanging on for dear life, even the hero himself. Um, Heath Ledger, it still a it would have been a great performance had he not passed on earlier this year. And it, that whole time, uh, his performance makes you, doesn't even make you realize that that tragedy even happened. Like, it, it's that good. It's not even him in that performance. You can't even tell it's him. It's another thing about it I liked. Uh, the writing was fantastic. Direction, shaky in some areas because uh, there's some of the editing might have been a little iffy but other than that i totally recommend it it was wonderful and i'm gonna go see it for a third time very soon i definitely enjoyed maggie gyllenhaal as rachel rachel yeah uh a lot more than katie holmes she's an excellent actress and what did you think of uh aaron eckhart as two-face mm, i'm not really familiar with two-face's character so, I, I, I don't even know his background, or even if that is his true origin. Is like Batman's best friend? Batman's yeah, he's best his best friend. pal, that's all, usually. You know right off the bat when they start not showing his face that he is Two Face, and anybody, I mean, not knowing Two Face, I know that Two Face is Harvey Dent. So, oh. immediately. So, it didn't matter then? Yeah, so it was just like, oh, so his lawyer name was Two Face. Oh, so I get it's it. like okay. when you find out Bruce Wayne's Batman, it doesn't really mean much because. Well, no, it, like, if they're going to reveal, mm -hmm. as far as uh, revealing his character as being bad, being Two-Face, it wasn't really What did you think when they shocker. revealed that Alfred was uh, Bruce Wayne's butler? I thought it was awesome, considering I haven't seen the, um, the first episode, or rather Batman Begins. I was kind of uh, not familiar with the Dark Knight series. Um, Going in blindly, basically. It, it wasn't, uh, I didn't feel lost or confused or, um, it was, it was very engaging. All the characters were good. Um, yeah, it was, it was long, but it didn't feel long at all, so it was, yeah. What was your favorite scene in the movie? Um, uh, funny one was when, uh, Joker was coming out of the hospital. And, 
<laughs> just the twitchy fingers and whatnot. So yeah, was, yeah, I liked it a lot.